Honourable Minister, good evening and uh, thank you for finding time to come to the Minister's desk. Good evening. Now, um, the Minister last week presented an $8.16 billion budget and uh, tonight he is here to unpack and explain some of the key issues in that budget before his appointment. Uh, through some of his articles, the finance minister was aware of the task before him, which included tackling the daunting budget deficit, government spending, as well as the currency issue. With about three or so months in office, we find out if he still has the fire in his belly to set Zimbabwe on a turnaround trajectory. Now, Honourable Minister, perhaps if we can get an overview of the economy so that we can uh, best understand the interventions that have been taken and need to be taken. Well, th thank you, Linda. First of all, let me say that I still have the fire, the energy and the enthusiasm to turn the Zimbabwe economy around uh, and contribute uh, in doing so, as many other people try, try to do the same. Now, let me say that the the budget that was presented last week that i presented really comes from how uh, we in government have diagnosed the issues the challenges but also diagnosed the opportunities as well um, uh, starting with the the challenges the first challenge of course uh, looking at externally is the fact that we're in areas in terms of our obligations to the countries and the institutions that we owe money uh, uh, the f first is the, the two, which is the African Development Bank and the World Bank, uh, who are the uh, creditor institutions, preferred creditor institutions, uh, whom we own all close to $2 billion uh, uh, together. So these would need to be cleared first in terms of meeting our, our obligations to, to, to pay them off and, 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 uh, and come up to date uh, with our, 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 our external uh, obligations. And doing uh, these, uh, 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 these payments will enable us to, to access, begin to access credit <coughs> lines, because that, is, that was the major problem, that we cannot access credit lines uh, uh, easily to support industry from abroad, from offshore. So clearly dealing with these areas will, uh, will unblock this uh, uh, conundrum of, of you know, uh, accessing credit lines at the moment. Uh, if banks or industry want to access credit lines, they have to go through the central <coughs> bank and then we have a government guarantee to support that. They can't do it without the state, without the state-owned institutions. So we're determined to, to change that. And the budget uh, in, in its construction is a stepping stone towards the, the and a key a pillar, a key step towards defining the roadmap for areas clearance. Of course, the areas, areas clearance uh, a roadmap involves a second stage, which is the uh, uh, negotiations with the, with the Paris Club creditors, who, by the way, are also shareholders in the African Development Bank and the, and the World Bank. And, and in that uh, negotiation will obviously result in some debt restructuring and, and some form of relief, which will allow us then to be able to carry the extent of the external debt that, 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 that we have. That, that's the first issue that this budget is trying to tackle to set the roadmap for an acceptable reform agenda that is acceptable to those uh, uh, who, who, who we owe money, but also acceptable to, to Zimbabweans who feel that they have, who have to carry the, uh, the, the burden of economic reform. The second uh, area uh, is that of the budget uh, deficit, or just recognizing that we have a twin deficit problem, a budget deficit as well as a current account uh, deficit. <coughs> So, so the budget recognizes this issue and then lies the, all the measures that, 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 that I propose in the budget. Looking at the budget deficit, we expect it to end, uh, end the year at, at, at just over 11% of GDP in terms of the budget deficit, uh, which is way above what was budgeted uh, this time last year. So there's been a massive overrun over the last 12, 12, 12 months and we're determined to contain this. And then uh, for, for next year, for 2019, for the budget, we're expecting this budget deficit to drop to as low as 5% of GDP. And we're determined to achieve this. And that will be a major achievement. It's a major coup in public financial management. We really want to put the public finances of the government in order. But, but how do we hope to achieve that? And this is what was spelled out in the, in the budget. It's, first of all, it is a revenue expansion. Yeah, on revenue expansion, we've already done that uh, through the introduction of the 2% intermediate uh, transactions 
electronic transactions and tax uh, with the various exemptions that we've put in place and we're pleased that the tax has been uh, uh, accepted by Zimbabweans and they've been patient with us while we fine-tune to make sure that the, the, the right incidence of the tax is established and there's no over taxation uh, in, 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 this, in, this, in this regard. Uh, but also in the budget, you notice how what we did was uh, to increase uh, uh, excise duties on, uh, on on the fuel front, uh, diesel, uh, paraffin, petrol. Uh, but but this uh, um, you can see I'm picking out all the revenue measures. But this was really not to raise revenue as such, but is to make sure that we establish parity for our fuel in terms of pricing within the region, because it's quite clear that we're subsidising our neighbours. Uh, that's why you know if you go to other countries they. You have traders who buy fuel from here, and then you find it, uh, you know, uh, escaping our borders and being sold elsewhere outside Zimbabwe because our fuel is so cheap after all. So, try uh, to establish Minister, that just to, parity just to cut is you key. Short there, uh, which rates do you actually uh, believe in? The market rate, the official rates, the one is to one rate. What rates do you believe in as the finance minister? Ah, you're not coming to the currency. I was going to come to that later. No, uh, you, you, you talk about uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, the fuel prices that you talk about. Oh, oh no, no, no. This, this is, the, remember that the, the reference currency in our multi-currency regime, the accounting currency is the U.S. dollar. That, that is what we have been, uh, uh, in terms of the accounting currency. And we've maintained that, that uh, rate of conversion with the RTGS, with the bond notes, is one to one. There is a reason why we say this, and I want Zimbabweans to understand me well on this. It's not that we're not aware of what the market does, uh, but what we're aware of is that we need to preserve value. The moment that w that kind of relationship is abandoned, will have major challenges Many have as, said as we expect. there are inconsistencies when you talk about, uh, when you say that our fuel is relatively cheaper compared to prices obtaining in the region, uh, creating an arbitrage opportunity for local consumers and transiting vehicles. Mangamashandisa measurement, ipikanaut yardstick. People argue that even at the prices that we have currently, uh, Zimbabwe's uh, fuel prices are higher compared to other countries in the region, no. Zambia and other countries. No, no, they are, they are, they are they are not. In fact, that's why you have this uh, movement of, of fuel from Zimbabwe to elsewhere in other countries. You can see I'm avoiding mentioning them yeah, because, for as a minister, I can't so, mention so them. So, what the yardstick did you use to say that uh, our fuel prices are, are, are lower uh, compared to other countries in the region? Oh, I, I'm comparing the price in whatever country I've chosen that I'm referring to. And our, and our name, pricing. Name one, for in, example. In, no, I don't want to mention the country yeah, because, as I say, as a minister, I cannot mention another country. We are aware of this arbitrage and wanted to close the, the loop. Right? So, so, so if, if I can press on on the, I'm still explaining the revenue measures. Now, let me let me mention the cost-cutting measures. Uh, in, in the budget, the President Munangagwa led from the front of this issue by cutting his basic salary by five percent. His v, the VPs also made this a, a similar uh, action and ask the cabinet ministers, deputy ministers, or everyone at the ministerial level did the same, including the CEOs of parastatals up to principal director uh, uh, level and the, and the PEM, PEM sex, as I said. So, so to me, this is a strong uh, signal that we mean business about austerity for prosperity, which was the theme of the, of, of, of the budget. So, so, so and, and also we followed up with a, a, a various measures in terms of containing costs and reducing waste within government, such as the consolidation of everything around in terms of various funds, uh, in various ministries, consolidating that into the revenue consolidated fund, uh, making sure that we contain the wage bill. We have said that, look, uh, uh, decisions were taken a long time ago to terminate the contracts for so, so some, some of the youth uh, employees uh, within government, uh, well, well over 2,000 of them, and this has to be effected uh, as an example. And then in terms of retirement policy, that, that this should be affected. Uh, absolutely, decisions were taken before my time, but they had not been affected. So all of that wage containment uh, measures will contribute to, to cost cont containment. All right, so now but also Minister, government I'm going to have to cut uh, you short. Um, those things that you're mentioning already in the public domain, and there are, however, grey issues or grey areas around those issues that you've already talked about. So let's go back a bit and go stage by stage. First of all, you talk about um, uh, the budget deficit. Uh, some sections have asked that uh, after all the 
uh, tax or revenue uh, generation uh, uh, measures that you've spoken about, uh, including taxation, why are we still incurring a budget deficit of 1.5 billion? Is it still not too much after increasing revenue and cut, uh, cutting expenditure? No, it is not too much. Remember that we are coming down from all the way up from 11% of GDP down to 5% of GDP. So that 1.5 billion is actually 5% of GDP. So we've, we're doing very well. Also remember that our economy is bigger. Our economy is 40% bigger than we initially thought. And this is to do with the rebasing exercise that we announced uh, uh, you know, on the 4th of October uh, uh, this year. So we're well within target with the 1.5 billion uh, deficit and we're able to accommodate all the activities that we think government ought to be engaged in in order to drive this economy forward and we're doing the right things by containing expenditure where it ought to be contained and also driving revenues where we need a, a, a broader tax base let's be honest Zimbabwe is more informalized now so it's important to get to the informal sector so partly the introduction of the two percent tax uh, for electronic transactions had to do with that as, as I explained when we when we introduced it so we're doing the right things and all the numbers add up Absolutely. All right. Let, let's uh, look at the issue of uh, the 5% salary cut. Uh, how much are you saving with this cut in terms of value uh, and other various measures? And many sections have also argued that the Maria Kawanda, Yema government ministers, including the presidium, is the allowances, but Mimi Maka takes at the basic salary. Can you explain on that? Oh, but how much is really in allowances? Uh, that, that's not a lot. I, I look at my allowances and say, what am I allow my, my allowance is it a lot? I, I really don't, don't think so. So in I terms think of, be amazed in terms that of the value that you're actually saving on how much is it through this five percent salary cut? Ah the five percent cut is to show commitment and political commitment that we are serious about cost cutting, we are serious about cost containment, we're serious serious about austerity and fiscal discipline. And, and yet so it's not about the figure. It's a political gimmick and the no, propaganda. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It's, there is no propaganda. There is absolute commitment, Linda, I, I promise you. This is, uh, it can't get, get better than that. It can't get, get, a lot of governments do that around the world as well. You find that a head of state, a specific minister, but can a president you, can you give us the value, honorable minister? No, no, no. The issue is not the value. We, 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 we know the amount, but we won't even bother to, to give it out. Because it's not a lot of people that are involved. The idea is that the leadership must set the tone. It's about setting the tone. It's a very important tenet of leadership. And, and that's what we are doing. And that's yet, what President Nagagwa is doing. On, on the other hand, you then say uh, these very same people, these government officials, including yourself, can then import uh, 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 vehicles uh, duty free. And yet, the ordinary man and woman on the street is having to to look for forex to pay for for duty. What are you saying about oh, that? Oh, that has never changed. It's always been the case that government ministers, and it's the case in many in most countries, there are certain privileges. It comes with the pack. And if you look at the packs of ministers compared to the private sector as chalk and cheese, they get nothing compared to the private sector. This is this is like that all over the world, you know? So so in the issue about forex for paying duty, all we said was pay duty in the currency in which you bought the car. That's that's all we've asked. So make a budget for that. Uh, you know, you, you'll be amazed at the number of cars that have been imported in the last few months. It's been staggering. And the amount of forex spent, uh, uh, the, 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 the importers do do have, have the monies. I'm not saying everyone has the monies, but they do have the monies. But also, those who were caught up by, by my statement, we have given leeway, we've given a breather. They have up until the 3rd of January next year to be able to, to bring in their cars and be able to pay through other TGS and not uh, pay through whatever forex they, they have in their, their, their possession. Uh, you, you'll be amazed. You'll find that people will be able to meet the forex uh, uh, duty component uh, without difficulty. They just have to budget for it. All right, and then we have the uh, current uh, Foreign Currency Exchange Control Act that uh, uh, criminalizes Munaka Wanikwari Mu Street, Achitenga Forex, Kanota Achitengesa, Maisa, Mimi Mutongo, we 10 years Mujeri. As a Murgut Iwa, Tinabasa, Maria Waiwa Nakubi, Trukuda Forex Yako. And a lot of people have said there are inconsistencies around uh, that uh, policy. Kuti Murguti Mimi, Trukuda Maria Komu Forex. Uh, yet most people are still earning in those RTGS balances. 
Oh, you know what? You can overanalyze any policy and find something wrong with it or turn it around and say it's inconsistent. It's normal. We, we can overanalyze. Can but we but say, are, are you legalizing the black market? No. Or, or are you let accepting me, that the, let the, me the black market actually exists and it's the norm of the day? Let me finish. We've said our priority as government is preservation of value. And we notice that all our policies are very consistent with that principle. Preservation of value means exactly that, which is that is the one-to-one -one convertibility. That principle will, will protect your pensions, it will protect the, your savings, it will protect the balance sheet of banks, it will protect the balance sheet of, of companies. And I keep reminding uh, you, Linda, and the public and everyone around here that uh, if, if you don't agree with me, just go back to 208, 209 and look what happened when that principle was not followed. That's all we are, we are doing when we try to outlaw this and that, is try to make sure we send the message, uh, but also walk the talk in terms of, of, of preservation of value and that, 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 that uh, convertibility. The, the, the there is something, of, by of, the way... Of, of, uh, the importation of, of vehicles, Honorable Minister, is really a contentious issue because people have then asked, are you legalizing the black market or are you saying the ordinary man or woman should not and cannot import a vehicle? No, well, why, why can't they import a vehicle? They would have paid a foreign currency for the vehicle in the first place. Right. Does so, they have uh, sought for on the black market? Oh well, it, it it's not my business to find out where they they found it, but they found it, and suddenly they want to buy, they want to import a car. They already they know that they have to pay for it in forex. Why is that not a problem? Why is the tax the only forex problem, and not the price of the car in the first place? You see, so 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 the the point is is like this. All we are saying is we know you are buying cars uh, by whatever means. Some of them are using free funds. You, know, you can use free funds at the moment. You can, they are using funds uh, sent through by the diaspora. Uh, it, it's up to them where they find the funds, frankly. But whatever they do, they should be on the right side of the law. And all we are saying, budget for your duty as well in the currency in which you bought the car. It, it, is, it is that simple. I don't see why the duty issue is the issue and not the price of the car in the first place which is also denominated in, in foreign currency. The issue, Honorable Minister, is that uh, when Warukuti via Tambura for a very long time, the economy hasn't been performing. Uh, hardly a few people, if any, are earning in Forex. So if you then say that Chendai Monotenga mota ni foreign currency, when Wazirukutambira ni foreign currency, yet government officials can import those vehicles duty-free or not using foreign currency, is this really austerity for prosperity or it's it, austerity Linda, Linda, for that, that's prosperity? Not that's not correct. What are, people are already buying their own cars in foreign currency in the first place. At Nagwa Tuma, they're already doing that. And all, all, all we are saying, meet your duty, mm -hmm. meet your duty component in foreign currency as well. That's all we've asked for. All right, then we go to the, we go back to the issue of uh, fuel in Matawura. Uh, because I, I want to move on to something else. We're getting stuck. No, those, to me, Honorable no, no. Minister, those are the sticky issues. Those are the issues that keep Zimbabweans awake at night. Zimbabweans want answers and they want them now. They want them yesterday. So those are the issues. You had many, President Emerson Mnangagwa's administration has promised servant leadership. No, no, no. no, 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 no I'm saying, I'm saying that there are, much, and there are a lot of bigger issues that are, I want to get through the moment, during these, the time. These, I don't want to get these, stuck these, in these the mud issues. on those I've explained because by Honorable position. Minister, the inconsistencies right now are, you're saying that you want to address the issue of inflation. Then you go on and uh, increase excise duty by 7 cents per liter on diesel and paraffin and, and petrol. And we all know the ripple effect of that. It will then obviously push the, the price of fuel up and the price of, uh, of basic commodities up. So how are you then addressing inflation? Oh, you, you know, we're addressing inflation by containing the budget deficit. The budget deficit, and I'm glad you have brought me back to the budget deficit because that's where I wanted to go. The budget deficit is the source of inflation. What it is doing, because we do print treasury bills, well, before my time, of course, to, 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 finan to finance it, those treasury bills were injecting liquidity into the, mar into the market, RTGS balances it, it, it is case in point. And that liquidity is what has been pushing infl inflation, where excess demand versus the supply is pushing up prices and putting pressure on inflation. So containing the budget deficit through these measures that I've explained is the way to deal with inflation in the long term, but also is the way to deal 
with the value of the currency because excess liquidity puts pressure on the value of the currency and creates currency uh, uh, volatility, at least the perception of, of, of value in the, in the currency market. So, so the deficit is key to dealing with, the, with inflation. That's why we are focusing on, on this issue of austerity, for prosperity, and, uh, but, but, but that really means you stabilize uh, our prices, you, you get growth going, you, you, you protect the values, and so forth and so forth and so forth. All right, uh, this is a special edition of the Minister's Desk. And on the show tonight, we have Finance and Economic Development Minister, Professor Mtuli Nube. And uh, very soon, I will be opening the phone lines. So many contributions or questions that have come for the Minister throughout the day. And our number is 0775-897-897. Uh, that's our WhatsApp number. The phone line is 77 I will ask our callers to be precise and straight to the point so that we can accommodate as many uh, callers as we we can now honorable minister what is the takeaway for the ordinary person in this budget some have said uh, uh, it's not a pro poor budget what is the takeaway from this uh, uh, budget statement that you presented on thursday last week this is a balanced budget it's a budget that is designed to target the poor and uh, the vulnerable and what we've done there, we've targeted, for instance, a contentious issue over the years, the issue of sanitary wear, for instance, for vulnerable women and rural girls. That's one issue that deals with vulnerability. The other issue is those who are disabled, the, those living with disability. We've done a lot in the budget to cover the, 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 the wheelchairs, the, the, uh, the various equipment, uh, the walking sticks and so forth. All of these coming in duty free into the in, 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 into into the country so so and, and then if you look at our the way we have adjusted the scales is the in terms of the the the, the pay ye that below 350 dollars you don't have to pay any tax previously it was 300 so we've done we've done that that adjustment so there are elements in the budget which are clearly targeting the more vulnerable and poorer sections of our community we will also say that in this budget five percent of the budget will go towards the provinces uh, to support devolution that's about 310 million dollars and the distribution of those monies will follow uh, the distribution of poverty the poverty map of zimbabwe population size and and the, the degree of inadequacy of social infrastructure within each of these provinces and districts so they're clearly issues that pertain to to, to to that sector also look at how much we've allocated to primary and and uh, education and secondary education that is clearly Pro poor that goes towards supporting the greater being. chunk, which is going to to salaries. Oh, hang on! They are providing services. You know how it works. You, you, you when you pay the teachers to deliver that service, and then uh, remember, education is an investment. Uh, you are investing in the future of those children. You are supporting the rural poor. Absolutely. Look at the the allocation we have made to the health sector. Uh, in, 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 in a similar, similar way, again, you are supporting the personnel and, uh, the, the that will provide to the services. That still doesn't meet uh, international standards. You mean uh, like the Abuja? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of that. I, I, know, I know what it is, but let me say this. That Abuja requirement is not enough as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I know the health economics very well. I've actually written a lot about it. Uh, I'm actually an expert on the economics of HIV specifically. Uh, globally so you see the issue that 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 may explain no 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 not abuja there's a fault that abuja requirement and i'll say this i'm sure a lot of people around the world will disagree with me it needs to focus on service delivery it cannot just be about input it should be about impact and output and yes so we for have every an ailing dollar health, uh, for, health sector I, I, exactly that's my point entirely so it's not about the quantum of resources it's about how each dollar is used to deliver services that's what we should focus on and not on abuja as yet look if we are clear on our on impact and uh, service delivery and we get to the 15 percent abuja tar target well and good but but then the framework should be clear it should be driven by service delivery and and and, and impact 
And uh, moving on, Honorable Minister, what is the wisdom in retaining the bond not? I think uh, uh, during the early days of your appointment, you were on record saying that you would uh, implement currency reforms uh, by year end, and uh, you sort of seem to backtrack, or at least your national 2019 national budget, budget statement uh, doesn't seem to speak into those currency reforms. Oh, I spoke to currency reforms. I can point you to the page. Please do. Let me explain. You know, there is a, the economics of the exchange rate works like this. The equilibrium exchange rate of, of, for any economy is determined by certain variables. Number one, the state of the budget deficit. Number two, the current account deficit. And that's what I mentioned in terms of the twin, twin deficits. The growth in, in money supply. The extent of the reserves. And in the short term, the interest rate differential between the country and the neighboring countries, at least its major trading partners. And then also the, the purchasing power parity issues, which is the inflation differential between the country and the neighbors. So there are certain fundamental variables that drives the value of your currency. And as you institute currency reforms, you must strengthen those variables. So what, what have we done in this budget? We've dealt with the issue of the budget deficit. That's problem number one. We know that by fixing that, that will help us create the right environment for sustainable currency reform. We're dealing with the current account deficit. But also something that I, I haven't asked in this interview, but I want to say it, it was looming large in the, in the budget, which is the support to the productive sector. The various rebates that we've put around the industry, the mining sector, supporting agriculture sectors, and, and other things that we put in there the, 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 you, you can go in the budget and see what kind of rebates we've put in there right across the board. All of that is going to drive uh, 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 import substitution and help deal with the, the, the second uh, part of the twin deficit, which is the current account de deficit. All those are key pillars for determining the sustainable value of a currency. And you need those to be in place before you can institute sustainable currency reform. So, believe it or not, by stealth, the process of currency reform has begun by dealing with those big issues such as the, the budget deficit. All right, I'm going to take some callers right now. Uh, Star Famelo? Good, thank you. You're through to the minister's desk. Go ahead with your contribution. Right, that's like the same. Yes, so we can hear you. I want to ask how much exactly is the figure? For the 5% cut in salaries? Yes, it oh. should be that. Oh. Should you want me to answer? Yes, you can respond. Oh, oh, th th thank you. Thank you for that question, which is the repeat question. As I say that the, the figure is not a very large figure. The issue about cutting salaries by leadership is to show leadership. And President Mnangagwa is leading from the front on that. So are all the cabinet ministers and everyone involved in that 5% uh, cut uh, uh, issue. Uh, and, and we mean business. We really want to signal that we are serious about austerity. We cannot give a message that uh, uh, the budget is about austerity for prosperity into Vision 2030 through the TSP uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, provisions without doing something like that. We have to show right. something as leaders that, that we are serious about it. And that's why we did this 5 uh, so, Honorable Minister, cut. I'm going to Thank ask you. you to take note of uh, the questions so that we can take as many callers as we can and then you'll respond uh, maybe to three or, or four calls. Uh, 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 Star Femino? Um, Good, thank you. Go ahead with your contribution. Minister, uh, what's, the what's the value of our uh, RTGS? relatives to the US dollar now, now that you are no longer allowing us to pay the duty of our cars in, in, in using transfers. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the minister has taken note of that question. Uh, we will take another caller. It's uh, eight minutes after seven o'clock and uh, this is a special edition of the minister's desk. Uh, Stair Femelo? Stair Femelo? 0772162651 Stair Femelo? Yes, you threw to the minister's desk. Taskira Maskira or Taurajin? Mundo Minister, but for Tauraguti, a Tunashansa Forex Badaram duty. In Indarima Fodgayam with the Badarwa Marimu Arati, yes. 
ndo wana kukupi forex ya kuna nduna badra jutiro Alright, thank you very much. Uh, uh, let's take some more callers. 0772162651. Uh, we have in the studio Finance and Economic Development Minister, Professor Mtuling Ngube. Please come through with your questions. Uh, from hello? Good, thank you. Go ahead with your contribution. In the Finance Minister. Is a way that government spending last year we budgeted 741, yeah, our budget deficit was 741 uh, is budgeted, but we went up to 2.62 billion. So, you are the way that government expenditure is a problem. But now, if you're saying we anticipate a budget deficit of 1.5 billion, he is actually saying <coughs> he has already failed to tackle government expenditure. Doesn't it mean that? All right, should I respond to those? that contribution? Yes, yes. go ahead. <coughs> th th thank you very much, uh, 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 callers, for your uh, uh, questions. I, I wish I'd had the names as well. Then I can I can speak to uh, people uh, with names, and that would be helpful. It's always good for, for connecting. You you asked a straight question, uh, that's the first call, about the value of RTG's uh, balances. For the tenth time, the the value of RTGS balances is one to one to the US dollar. I said that for the tenth time. And the principle of preservation of value is at play within the multi currency regime, which is the official uh, currency regime within this country. Now, the, the issue of Forex, uh, 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 of, of paying Forex for, for duty, but in, in buying the goods in the first place, how do you get to buy the goods? Because remember, you have to buy the goods before you pay your duty so you don't start off by paying duty first so 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 really to ask me where you get the forex when you have to buy the goods first is putting the cart before the, the, the horse all we are saying is that as as you buy the goods and, and we know you buy the goods budget for also the duty in the currency in which you've procured those goods that's that's all we're asking you uh, uh, to do on the issue of the budget deficit of 1.5 billion the the caller here i wish again i had the name is getting mixed up the issue about this kind of uh, um a macroeconomic uh, or fiscal balance sheet of the government is not the quantum it's about the quantum as a percentage of either expenditure or the size of the economy so this 1.5 billion that is referring to is five percent of gdp of gross domestic pro product right so, so this is within uh, acceptable targets. It means that actually we have succeeded in bringing the budget deficit down from the current levels of 11 plus percent down to 5 percent. And that's the projection for 2019. So we should, we should always think in terms of the size of the economy. That's why we think in ratios. It's not about the levels. It's about the ratios, which really means you're speaking to the size of the economy. That's how you think, think through the, the, the balance sheet and the income statement of, of, of the government and, and for the whole economy. All right, let's take some more callers. Dara Famelo? Yes, go ahead with your contribution. Your name, please, and where you're calling from. Well, I can't give you my name, but uh, I wanted to ask the minister, no, you know, we are just a general layman here in the economy. Look at the rise of prices in, in shops. You are affecting the general uh, citizen. When you drive expensive cars, why can't you cut off every VIT in those government, in your government? Every VIT, drive around the community, see what people are struggling to get target material by the shops. And you are busy doing it's nothing because the prices are continuing going up. Please help the economy, please. All right, thank you very much, Mavanzwa, Honorable Minister. It's okay. Yeah, that's in order. Uh, yeah. Let's just take another caller before no, you respond. So don't compel it's, them it's to give us names. Uh, Too far, wait, wait. 
All right, thank you very much. Uh, yes, you can respond to those uh, question? two last callers. Uh, 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 those two last callers we have exceeded. The only issue of, uh, of inflation that the first uh, caller uh, referred to, as I say that the biggest driver of inflation has been the budget deficit. It is created, I'm sorry I'm using these big words, but that's how economics works. The moment you have some disequilibrium, that's, that's what happens. Uh, uh, prices get, get, get out of control. But look at what we did as government. We've used not, not just uh, uh, policy measures, but also we've used moral suasion. You know what happened if you look at the, uh, uh, one of the colors is a farmer, to, to, to price of seed and fertilizer, in one day it just went up three times. Totally unjustified. And, and we called in the seed producers, we talked to the fertilizer uh, manufacturer and said, look, this is unjustified. There's no reason why something that you had already produced should go up three times, four, four times. It's unaffordable. Uh, you should consider bringing it down. And this is typical, it's moral suasion. And the sole reason they understood our point of view and the, 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 the prices of seeds and fertilizer. I'm just giving those, those examples. And this is uh, helping contain the inflationary pressures as well. If you look at the, the issue of drugs, ag again, there's been a, a moral suasion, a little bit of arm teasing about around, you know, maybe you might lose your license uh, if a pharmaceutical uh, uh, you know, company and so forth. But all of that is, is a form of moral suasion to get the drug manufacturers to stop demanding, you know, payment in US, US dollars because they've never moved from this. They've always uh, done that. And yet they are lining up at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe to seek foreign currency to import drugs and then and so forth and so forth. So there's clearly some inconsistency and some profiteering that I think is, is, is unacceptable in our view. And this moral, moral suasion has helped. So we're doing a lot of things to make sure that prices come down, uh, uh, you know, basic goods are, are affordable through moral suasion means in addition to other policies that, that, that we've put in place. All right, I'm going to take some more uh, callers. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, so I'll try and take as many callers as I can. Star Famelo? Star Famelo? Yes, sir, you threw to the minister's desk. Paboda or Robert Rajutuno Badara Nima US, as you are that US in a bond, Ike Jagiji. All right, do I come from the woman away? To not end our getting Botora, Eva with a terrorist, a carrot, such as a pump can, we put it under a chip into the O seven seven two one six two six five one, and Yaye, Jutil Rambachi Zoga, Honorable Minister, as a chair pump can open to Rashikari. Strafamelo, yes, you threw to the minister's desk. Yes, my name is Tomarari. All right, Bunya, go ahead. So, I want to divert the minister a little bit. When you are talking about current account deficit, I think the figures that we use or statistics that are in has distorted themselves. I have got experience myself in terms of valuation of exports. Those things are too undervalued. That's why even you see the, the, the current account is, is wider. Not only because we are importing more than what we are exporting, but the valuation of those exports. I think if the minister would want to focus on that, and just look at how mining houses are valuing their exports. I think he can get something uh, from that one. That's my contribution. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. You can respond to those uh, uh, contributions that we've just had. Um, the, the first question is something that I've already dealt with, which is, the, again, it comes back to the issue of duty in, 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 in Forex. And all I'm saying is that please pay your duty in the currency in which you bought your car it is it is that simple please budget for that others you won't be able to bring your car in because you can't pay it for with, with, for you using using anything else first of all you have to go through the hurdle of 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 paying for the car in the first place wherever you're buying it from and then paying the duty on it why is the duty element more more of a contentious issue than buying the car 
uh, paying the price in the first place. Clearly, there's a, d a disjuncture in thinking there. Um, um, Bunya is making a very interesting point about the current account deficit that some of the exports are undervalued. This is an issue that we, we can also refer to as transfer pricing. And by the way, we are, we are going to do in the budget, uh, I go into this and we're saying that we want to deal with this issue to make sure that there's a fairer valuation of exports. He's raising an important point. We want to make sure there's a fairer valuation of exports in order to make sure that there's transfer pricing is minimized uh, this this is very very uh, critical and, and I agree with him that this is an issue uh, uh, that there's some some distortion but at the end of the day we have to work with the figures that we can we can attest to at any point in time and we are seeing this, this current account deficit but over time we'll plug the hole on transfer pricing and make sure that Zimbabweans get a, a fairer value for the exports that are, are being exported to other countries uh, I thank you all right my last two callers Dr. Miller Good, thank you. You threw to the minister's desk. Um, what well, a few questions for the minister. The first one is on the budget deficit. Um, Honorable Minister, when you took over, there was this wild uh, spiral of the exchange rate. You have said exchange rate is being driven by the imbalance on the bu on the on the budget de deficit this borrowing can you tell the nation honorable minister we have been given information to the effect that as of november 2017 the borrowing uh, domestic debt was around 4.5 billion as of september 2018 the domestic debt was 5 billion uh, additional to the 4.5 billion which gives this to around 9.5 billion that's correct Right, thank you very much. When you do your budget or when you do your things, do you know what Zimbabweans really want? Are you taking us where we give you the mandate to take us to? Or you are just doing what you think is right but does not have the interest of the ordinary people? Are you doing what Zimbabweans really want? Thank you very much. I think we've heard those questions loud and clear. They're very, very clear. L l first of all, let me deal with the... With, can you hear me? Yes, they can hear you. Sounding funny on my ears, in my ears here. Uh, the issue of the budget deficit and that the domestic debt has basically doubled uh, what has happened to the money and so forth. But, but that's what I said. It has doubled and this is an issue. Uh, and, and this is reflected in the extent of the budget deficit. And this is what we have to contain uh, in these budget uh, uh, proposals, uh, which I presented on 22nd of November, uh, and that's exactly what I'm determined to do, and, 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 I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Now, where has the money been spent and so forth? Oh, I can show you the list of, of, of things that it is spent on. Is is uh, salary, uh, uh, is, is overruns, some of it has been spent on supporting uh, uh, the agricultural sector. And of course, now we've better food security with uh, 500,000 tons, uh, metric tons, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of strategic reserves, because of that, 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 that uh, financing. Some of the monies went to support parast ailing parastatals, uh, literally bailing them out. So there's a whole list of areas that I am able to share, and this is public knowledge, by the way, of how, how the monies were, were spent, this extra expenditure or, 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 or override, and I'm determined to, to deal with that. And in fact, we are clamping down on those areas in the first place. Those are the cost containment areas that will reside in a containable uh, budget uh, deficit. Um, so when I make these proposals, do I uh, talk to Zimbabweans? Absolutely. When we did the budget consultations, we set up a, a Facebook page for it. We set up a Twitter uh, consultation uh, a page for it uh, and so forth. So we've received quite a lot of social uh, 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 you know suggestions through the social media from the public directly uh, 
That's the first thing. The second thing that is that we consulted the private sector, uh, the CEOs, uh, various uh, people within the pri private sector, and they submitted a written submission uh, to us. We also consulted civil society. We also consulted parliamentarians who are representative of the people in the first place. And, and everyone contributed to this budget. Everyone has been consulted. You must understand that you can never satisfy every individual, but you can satisfy people generally. And people want to see progress. They want to see us walk the talk, and we certainly uh, walk the talk. The, the caller also made a, a comment that all oh, shiny vehicles are being seen here and there and, and, and so forth. I haven't bought, I haven't bought or authorized as Minister of Finance a single vehicle for a member of parliament yet, nor for a minister yet. Absolutely not. On the contrary, we've said members of parliament, yes, they'll get their vehicles, but it will be through a loan scheme, and they know that. Yeah. All right. Number two, the ministers, we've not bought them uh, uh, any cars yet. I don't have a ministerial car bought for me uh, uh, by, by the government. Uh, absolutely not. We've held back on those vehicles, but uh, but again, this again is leading from the front. We want to show that but those vehicles business will through come and they austerity. will be exempted from that uh, uh, forex, uh, uh, the, the payment of duty in forex. Do they have to be bought abroad? Why can't they be bought locally as well? You haven't asked me Do that. we have a, a, a local uh, manufacturing oh, yes, supply that can meet capacity oh, and demand? Oh yes, absolutely, we do. Yeah, we do. So, 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 so uh, really we are walking the talk on austerity, especially around vehicles, which we know also are quite emotive, an uh, emotive, emotive issue. Uh, and we mean business about taking Zimbabwe uh, uh, into stability and then into Vision 2030, which is an upper middle income country by year 2030. And, and we are already is, lower middle what is, income. What does uh, Vision 2030 mean for the ordinary person or the <coughs> minister? It means that we are on the road to prosperity. We are going through, yes, a rocky period, but we will be out of it and we are headed for for, for prosperity. Talk Zimbabwe to, to, will talk, be talk, normal talk again. To my aunt who is at the back <coughs> of beyond Kunyanyadzi, Kwakitsia Tota, Kanamuchiti Vision 2030, what does it mean for her? It means that the future is bright. In what ways? And we have to walk the talk in, 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 in meet all our targets. It means that we have strong stronger growth, we will create more jobs. We have seen the data uh, from NASA that we have created about 800,000 jobs. No one is talking about that. Uh, except those who, who got the jobs, of course, they are talking about it, but I don't think in, the, in this studio for sure. Um, so, so, so with, it's creating jobs, it's, 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 it's uh, make sure that the economy can grow. It means that we have sound management of the economy for the betterment of, of everyone. All to right, make sure that Zimbabwe becomes normal again. Now, Honorable Minister, the Zimbabwe Thank Council you. of Churches, who are the sponsors, the proud sponsors of this program, today delivered uh, a petition or a paper to Parliament, and that uh, these are the recommendations or what they're calling for, that uh, the 2% tax be revised downwards from 2% to 0.5%, and the proceeds being be ring-fenced towards social service delivery. They say the budget is silent on the uses of uh, uh, the tax. The minister is not sincere to post uh, to postpone for considering uh, further exemptions under uh, the tax to January 2019 when the citizens have expressed that the tax is excruciating. Number two, increase from 5% to 10% cut on salaries of all senior positions from principal directors, permanent secretaries and other equivalents up to deputy ministers and uh, the cut be widened to include basic salary allowances and benefits and that the salary cut must be complemented by drastic measures of rationalizing of foreign traveling and trips including a cap on the number of foreign trips by the president foreign embassies must assume a greater responsibility of representing the country number four only the president must be provided with the government vehicle other senior government officials must be put on government loan scheme to purchase their own vehicles and uh, that the budget must adhere to developmental budgeting benchmarks requiring budget allocations for health and agriculture to account 
account for 15% and 10% respectively, and that the budgetary allocation for the security sector exceeding $1 billion is consistently high for a country at peace and crowd out greater investment for social service delivery, and that the appointing authority uh, of foreign currency allocation committee must differ uh, with the institution drafting the operating framework in order to strengthen the independence of the committee, that the budget must be underpinned by a social contract between the government and the citizens. Ordinarily, election processes must result in social contract. However, the contestations of the July elections imply that there is no social contract between the government and the citizens. Government must therefore initiate processes that will inculcate social contract for the Zimbabweans to have some common identity. And lastly, fostering trust and confidence among the public through national envisioning processes and addressing the issue of the exchange rate. Your comments on those uh, recommendations as well. Oh, oh, we would, would need two hours to go through each of those. I think you agree with me what that what they've really... First of all, let me appreciate the the the, the issues that they are raising. The Islamic Council of Church is an important institution uh, within our society, uh, but we would need three hours to go through each of those. They've been very prescriptive in their approach, they say this must happen, that must happen, that must happen. And of course, that's not how we, we operate. Uh, it's, I would take it for me, it's just a response to what we're proposing in the budget. All I can say that we have come up with a credible budget where we've thought through the issues that I've outlined, external issues, the domestic issues, the team deficit issues. We've thought through all of that uh, in, in terms of our of our recommendations and on the two percent uh, tax we we we, I, we included uh, quite a, a long list of exemptions uh, uh, absolutely and we've been true to this we included those exemptions and if the request is for further exemptions we're always fine-tuning to make sure that uh, it is progressive and not reg regressive on on the on the rate the rate will stay at two percent or all we'll consider for now is, is some fine tuning as we go along, and I've said this, and we've walked the talk on this, and we've continued to, to fine tune. Thank you. Your parting remarks to the people of Zimbabwe. Oh, oh, as I said, this budget is about austerity for prosperity. We've done the right thing uh, in terms of belt tightening, and we believe that this would contribute to a stable economy, an economy that will lay the right foundation for us to achieve uh, the objectives of the transitional stabilization program. Uh, which ends in December 2020, uh, uh, and then onward to achieving the objectives and aspirations of Vision 2030, which is that of becoming an upper middle income country by year uh, 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 2030. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for coming to the show, and we certainly hope we will have you in future shows uh, to shed more light on issues that keep Zimbabweans awake at night. Thank you very much for coming through. Thank you. I'm looking forward to coming back. Until next time, I'm Linda Muriro. This has been a special edition of the Minister's Desk, proudly brought to you by the Zimbabwe Council of Churches. It's good night for now.